Hi again. We keep talking about um, yurts, uh, their origins, types, design, history, and etc. And in this video, particularly, we will be talking about yurt parts and assembly. We'll start with Mongol gear, and uh, first we will cover frame terminology. Now, uh, I must apologize for my uh, before my Mongol speaking brothers because I am, I don't know any Mongol at all, so I will try to pronounce uh, all these terms the best I could. But if I uh, mess it up, please apologize. Uh, please forgive me. Uh, I want to apologize in advance. So the door piece is called ejik or halga. The uh, wall lat lattice section is called Hana. The dom poles are called Ana or Unu. The skylight ring is called Haracha or Tono. And the support poles are, are called Bagana. So these are major main uh, uh, frame terminology terms. And uh, in terms of uh, felt cover terminology, the section that covers the walls is called adakka. The section that covers uh, dome is called devir. And the one that covers the skylight is called urige. Uh, now moving to Kazakh yurt frame terminology this is where i'm on my native term turf and uh, these ter these terms i know uh, from long long time ago so the door is yesik uh, the wall lattice section is called kerege the dome poles are called uwak and the skylight ring uh, the skylight assembly is called shanrak now uh, uh, these terms are from particularly Kazakh language because this is the language I speak but uh, pretty much all other Turkic uh, other, other Turkic peoples who used ease would use very similar terms uh, so they would sound more or less uh, similar to Kazakh and uh, speaking of yurt felt cover terminology, the door flap cover shown rolled up here is called keys yesik, which literally means felt door. The wall cover means uh, uh, is called turluk. The dome cover is called uzuk. And uh, skylight cover is called tunduk. Now, uh, tunduk means uh, night, uh, night cover, because it was predominantly usually covered uh, uh, at night time. Interestingly enough, uh, the Kyrgyz refer to uh, the skylight itself as tunduk. So there are these little variations between very close uh, Turkic speaking uh, peoples. Now, uh, speaking of assembly, this is uh, very important information if you are, if you want to uh, get practical and you know uh, maybe buy a yurt and try putting it by yourself. So please pay attention here because this might save you a lot of time if you do it properly. It takes very few time, very little time, and just two people can do the, the whole assembly. So you start with uh, first uh, you put up your, your door piece, your yesik, and you add two carrier gear sections on right and the left of it. And uh, though they're called uh, carrier gear uh, when referred to just the piece, when we start putting a yurt uh, we start referring to them as kanat, 
uh, as in wing and the amount of the uh, of the of the wings or kerige that we use uh, kind of determines uh, the kind of yurt we're raising for example the most typical is uh, four to six kanats or four wings and uh, this is what you would refer to for example you would say alta uh, kanat i for example, uh, which means uh, six-winged yurt, and you know immediately that it doesn't have six uh, wings and it doesn't fly. It means that it's made its wall section is composed of six kerge. So uh, this video is for uh, six uh, six kanat alta kanat i. So you start with the door piece, as I said. You put it vertically. You attach uh, two kanats on left and right and you tie them with special uh, flat uh, rope or, or stripe uh, and it stays firmly together when you do it like this then you attach uh, the third and fourth section to the loose to the free ends of the first two carrier sections and then you uh, add uh, fifth and sixth section and uh, you kind of link them in the back so now you have this circle complete uh, the entire diameter and it's very important to know this is the golden rule if you follow it uh, you will always get your yurt right that the door height the the door frame the door assembly height determines the height of the carrier why is it important? Because kerge is a flexible uh, structure. You can uh, stretch it so that it's very long and low, or you can kind of uh, uh, put it closer, tighter, so that it's higher but shorter. And because of that, you can vary the diameter of the yurt. With the same amount of kanats and this, uh, of the same size, you can make it uh, you know significantly larger diameter walls but then you will lose at height so the golden rule here is you always raise kerge uh, in line of the top of the frame of the door this way you will get this uniform height and it will give you the diameter so that you don't have to worry about you know making it uh, larger or 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 smaller always go with the door height and if it if all the parts are from the same yurt if they match each other this should be your optimal height for the wall sections now uh, the next step is raising the shanrak uh, usually the uh, the most respected the senior person in the family because this was a family occasion family affair raising a yurt so usually the most respected male the, the the patriarch would step inside of the ring and he would hold uh, the uh, the shanrak with a with this special pole support it's, uh, it, it's called bakan uh, interestingly enough uh, uh, the word bakan is very similar uh, to the word bagana from Mongol yurt uh, support uh, pieces from the columns. So the Mongol uh, gears columns are called bagana, and uh, in Turkic yurts, the the pole that supports temporarily supports the shanrak during the installation is is called bakan. So uh, Two, uh, two pieces with similar function uh, and have very similar name. So that, uh, I think, one of the evidences uh, showing that yurts are, uh, come from uh, same design, from similar design. And that uh, Mongol gear probably predecesses, most likely predecesses uh, the E design as the 
previous stage of development of evolution. Anyways, uh, so the seri the senior person would hold the Bakan pole with Shanrak loosely sitting on it on top of it. It's not attached. It's just sitting there. And the reason why it has to sit freely is that once the yurt is assembled, you remove the Bakan and it just stays there. So you can't attach it, otherwise it will just stay there permanently. Or you will have to climb and untie it, disattach it. So it's just sitting there. Uh, the Shandrak is sitting on the pole per, uh, temporarily. And then once it's installed in place and secured in place, it's just removed. And uh, to secure it in place, you start putting the uh, the wok poles in the hole in, in the special holes in the shanrak in the ring of shanrak, and then you tie the 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 hockey stick end to the carrier to the top of carrier. It sits there neatly. You just tie it. The rope is attached to the hockey stick end, so all of them would have it. So you just tied in place and that's it once you have your you you always uh, that's another golden rule you always start from uh, at least four ends so if you have just one uh, uh, if, if there are just two people raising the yurt one is holding the shanrak with bakan and another person the assistant would put four first start with four uh, or uq, put on four sides of the assembly and then uh, would start adding more uh, going like this so it starts with just four and then you add two uh, one to each so you end up with eight and then uh, 16 and etc and that's how you end up with the entire uh, shanrak uh, and 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 works assembled together forming this roof dome structure and that's when you can safely remove the bakan because it won't collapse it will just stay there so these are the steps the six steps of uh, raising the uh, raising the frame of the Kazakh uh, e or, or Turkic uh, type yurt uh, in Mongol yurt it's much simpler because once you the first three steps would be exactly the same, uh, but when you get to the to raising the the skylight piece uh, in Mongol uh, design, the poles the bar, the barana would be permanently attached to it. So you transport them separately, but before assembling, you attach them to the skylight piece to the tono, and then uh, once you raise them like this. Uh, it's pretty much very easy. You just add the uh, add the, uh, the 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 roof poles, and they are straight. So it's it's very easy to assemble, and that's it. You end up with with assembled uh, gear frame. So these are the differences. Now uh, talking about the cover assembly. Uh, uh, as far as I know, the uh, Kazakh e the Turkic yurt and uh, Mongol gear are identical uh, in, in, in terms of uh, configuration and shape of the uh, felt pieces. They could be slightly different in decoration and uh, shape and etc. But the main principle is the same. So we have uh, two wall sections. In Mongol gear, they're called adak, and in Kazakh e, uh, they're called turluk. Then we have two. Uh, then we have two roof sections called in Mongol devir, and in Kazakh they're called uzuk. And uh, the third piece is called kiz yesik or felt door in Kazakh. I couldn't find the name of it in Mongol language, but they they also use it. And finally, the uh, the skylight cover is called Urege in Mongol and Tunduk in, in Turkic languages. And uh, the way we assemble them, once the uh, wooden frame is put in place, 
in first uh, step we put uh, two urlogs over the wall sections over the kerige or 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 kanats uh, so two pieces would wrap uh, the entire perimeter the entire the entire diameter of the yurt from left and the right and then we install the uh, yesek keys uh, the the felt door so once uh, this is assembled uh, all of the pieces have ropes attached to to the corners so we tie them securely it becomes very solid uh, uh, well assembled structure uh, the pieces won't go anywhere and then we start dressing the um, uh, roof pieces we start with the front piece and then uh, the front piece once it's tied and secured in place uh, we put the back piece back roof piece and it kind of at the ends at two ends on left on the left and on the right it overlaps the front piece so there is no opening it overlaps securely uh, to a good a good distance so that no uh, precipitation no wind will ever get inside and then again it's tied securely with these attached ropes so it's not going anywhere and uh, finally we put the uh, the last piece which is tunduk piece uh, that covers the uh, the the shanra the, the skylight now once the yurt is assembled uh, if it's assembled correctly if it assembles properly uh, it's very secure it's resistant to elements and we'll talk about this later two pieces remain uh, uh, sort of uh, movable which is a door piece it could be rolled up on a hot day or uh, rolled down on a, on, a, on a cold day to provide extra protection against cold and the uh, skylight piece also it could be uh, sort of either completely uh, removed or or just it's kind of like a hood on your jacket you you can just remove it on the back or you can keep it halfway so that uh, you know <laughs> half of the of the skylight is opened and uh, provides for ventilation and uh, light coming through it with another part uh, covered so again it's 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 variable you can you can either open it completely shut it completely or open it partially the way the way you want and that's how you assemble uh, both Kazakh yurt and Mongol yurt it's a fairly straightforward uh, operation it takes some time to get used to it to do it properly uh, but if you follow these simple steps I think you will save yourself a lot of time because it really it's it's very straightforward the nomads uh, always try to do to make things as simple as optimized as possible and this is the design they came up with over uh, thousands of years of using the yurts and perfecting the design so this is really really this is really good this is really good and if you follow the the steps that I described you will have no problem assembling the yurt and this is it for this section uh, we will have more in the following videos so please stay with me and I will see you soon thank you